Today we're going to be talking about the state of component testing. I've had a few people asking me about all the different testing frameworks and libraries available for components lately for Vue and React. So we're going to talk about all the different libraries that are available, which ones you might like to use, and then I'm going to share my current workflow with you for writing my component tests for my front end applications. Over here we have this diagram showing a bunch of different testing frameworks and libraries. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So down the bottom we have the more simple and less opinionated frameworks. For example, we have things like Enzyme or React DOM test utils or Vue test utils. These are fairly unopinionated libraries. They do a lot of different things, but they don't tell you how to do how to write your tests. They just give you the the, the features and let you figure things out on your own. People tend to refer to these as unit testing libraries, mainly because of the tendency to write very simple tests. So you test a, a simple or small component in isolation and you have a large number of these tests. These tend to run in a terminal and they are very, uh, very unopinionated. They won't really tell you how to do things and often you need to kind of build frameworks on top of them to make them very expressive and featureful. Above that, we have our testing library uh, group of frameworks. There's a bunch of different integrations. Today we're talking about Vue and React. These are a bit more expressive. They still do run in a terminal, but people tend to use these for integration tests. You can of course still write individual component tests, but it's also uh, billed as something you can use to write larger tests as well. We also have Storybook. I'm not sure if this really counts as a testing framework. It's more of a, a visual testing framework, I suppose, but this is also in the similar layer to the other ones for testing library and so on. It's something used to make sure your components are looking good and everything is working correctly. Finally, at the top of the stack, we have the more opinionated runners. For example, something like Cypress. These have lots of lots of different features, but they do tend to be aimed at bigger, more end-to-end -end like applications. So the tests do tend to run slower or they can run slower. It depends on how fast your tests are and how fast your application is. So we're going to take a look at a very simple application and all the different ways you might test it with all these different frameworks and talk about some of the pros and cons of each. The application we're going to be looking at is this very simple form application. It's for, let's say a hospital. We have our patient data here. We have the name and the weight. If I go ahead and refresh it, we're going to see everything is invalid and we cannot submit this form. If I go ahead and fill this one out with my name, for example, and put in my weight, uh, let's say I weigh 70, everything's going to be fine. It does have validation between a certain uh, threshold and I can change between pound and kilograms as well. So we have quite a bit of functionality here to test. We need to test our validation obviously to make sure the number when it's outside this range is going to show the correct error. We also have to make sure it's working correctly with our component and make sure it's also accessible. So let's take a look at some of the ways we might like to test this component. When I was developing this, the very first thing I started with was my business logic around my validation. So making sure given our input, for example, a string or a number, is it valid or not? At this point, I hadn't even written any components. I just started off with a single file called form.js and you can see that one right here. You can see up the top, there is no imports, there is no view and there is no react. This is a very simple little uh, validation framework and it's just written in plain old JavaScript. Everything is a pure function, so it's very, very easy to test. What I mean by that is the result of this function will always be the same given the same input. There are no side effects and no mutation. These kind of functions are very easy to test. If we look at this, we can see there's only two branches, if the value is null or if the value is not. In this system, all validations have to return a very specific object. You need to have valid, true or false, and you need to have a message if it is not valid. In this case, we're going to need to have two tests one for if value is undefined and one for if value is defined. If we go down here and see a more complex one, for example, is between, it's exactly the same. We have our value and our constraints here, and depending on the value, we're going to return valid false with a message, or we're going to return valid true. Again, very easy to test. We're going to have at least three tests here, one for the minimum, one for the maximum, and one for the valid state. If we actually head over to our tests, we can see how simple these are going to be. Uh, they are very short and simple tests and they're just a large number. You can easily verify we've covered all the cases. For example, I said we're going to have two here. We actually have three. One is for undefined, one is for a null string, and one is for when there's some value. We have a lot of these tests, but they're very simple and very easy to debug. Let's go ahead and run them and see how quick they actually run. So I can just do yarn test unit and pass in my test path, which is going to be form.spec.js.
This is going to be nice and fast, of course, because they're very simple. Uh, it took 188 milliseconds, which is pretty quick for 23 tests. Probably can get things going a bit quicker, but that is fine for now. One other thing I'd like to show you is what happens when this fails. A good testing framework should give you good failures and make it very clear what is going on. If we go ahead and run this one now with a failure, we're going to see it should have been true, but we got false. And it is very easy to see what's going on and where the error is going to be. Uh, we can easily go and fix that and everything is going to be just fine. So now that everything is working, let's take a look at our integration tests. How do we make sure this business logic is working correctly with our component? Specifically, we need to integrate this function here, patient form. This is basically like a view model. We're passing in a patient, which has a name and a weight. We're going to use our required validator, our uh, validate measurement, which is going to do the minimum and the maximum. And then we're going to return the result. If I head over to my form, in this case, it's going to be form validation.view. We have all of our HTML. Uh, it's exactly what you would expect. We just have some labels and some inputs and some validations. And if we head down here, it's also equally simple. We have our form, which is going to be some reactive data. We're then using our patient form here, and that's just going to update every time any of these inputs change. And finally, we have our valid computer statement down here. We're just going to check if the form is valid. So what we need to be testing here is not necessarily the business logic. We're fairly confident the, the constraints are working correctly. What we want to do is make sure if the inputs are filled out, are the correct error messages showing, and so on and so forth. There is quite a number of ways we could do this. We have our testing library or we have our view test utils. Let's have a look at those two and see how they look. I'm going to head over to my form validation spec and we're going to have firstly our test utils tests and here they are. What we're going to do is use mount to mount our form component and then we're going to go through and interact with it. We have to use a wait, I'll talk about that one in a moment, but basically what I'm going to do is head over to each one of these and we're going to fill out the, the fields. So we have the name, and we have the weight, we have to select something from the drop down, and then we should be able to click on submit. We see we're doing that exact thing here. We find the name and set the value. We're setting it to pounds and 150. And we're now asserting that there are no errors rendered. And that's going to pass because there are no errors rendered. We then have the opposite test down here, we're making all the errors, and then we're saying the errors should be rendered. And that is working just fine. Let's go ahead and actually run these and see what happens. Of course, these should be passing. Let's just make sure they are passing before we uh, go any further. These are going to be nice and quick as well. And they are passing. Uh, actually, I think I ran the incorrect ones. It should be running form validation spec. Oh no, that is indeed the correct ones. So what we're going to do now is watch this one fail and just see what happens. Again, good frameworks should give you good errors and make it very easy to debug. In this case, it is failing and it's not actually as easy to debug this one. We can see it was expecting an array of two, but we're only getting an array of one, and that's all we really have. What we would need to do here to debug this is go console log and pass in wrapper.html. This is going to give us the output or what's currently rendered, and then we hopefully will be able to figure out what's going on. It turns out this is not as useful as you might think. We have our HTML up here, but it's not exactly clear what's going on. And this is a very simple component. You can imagine if this gets more complex, you're going to have no idea what the problem is. What we need to do now is count through here, find the errors that should be rendered or that shouldn't be rendered and figure out what is going on. And this is not really ideal. This is something that we all struggled with for many years. This was kind of a state of component testing. Uh, it was the best thing we had, so we just dealt with it. But it's really not ideal to not be able to see what you're rendering other than this HTML in a terminal. The tests are also a little bit difficult to read and write. The main problem is we have to use await here. That's because jest is synchronous, or all test runners basically are synchronous. It's just going to run everything one after the other without waiting. Vue and React and many other frameworks are asynchronous. They will wait to update on the next frame, basically when request next animation frame is called. So what we need to do is call await and make sure the DOM has updated before we make our assertion. Otherwise, we're going to make an assertion prior to the updated DOM and it's going to be incorrect. So this is a little bit more overhead to learn. And this is one of the reasons a lot of people struggle with testing. You're so used to being able to see your application and just work on it, that when you go to do testing, it's a little bit more difficult. Firstly, you're stuck in this terminal. You have no idea what's going on. It's very hard to debug. And the other problem is you're not even sure if your test is wrong. A lot of the time, you probably just forgot to write a wait or something like that. Everything is fine, but you're just not getting the result you would expect. And this is a little bit problematic. There are some solutions to this. Testing library attempts to uh, sort of fill this 
or solve half of this problem by giving us better ways to write our tests. And Storybook tries to solve the other half of the problem by showing you what's been rendered in your browser. If we scroll down here, we're going to see the testing library tests now. They do look very similar. We're going to call render. It doesn't return a wrapper. It just renders everything to the DOM. And we sort of have to do the same thing. We're going to fire our event. In this case, we're going to update the, the elements. And it's a little bit more expressive than test utils. Instead of using something like a query selector, we're going to use get by label text, get by display value, or get by label text again. We also have our query by role here. So it really encourages you to write your component tests in a more accessibility friendly way. Instead of using just query selectors, which is not something a user would do, you're going to use the things the users actually look at. For example, the labels and the roles. This is something very useful for people using screen readers. These tests are a little bit better. We do still suffer from some problems, namely the await problem. There are some solutions to this, but you generally do end up having to do something like use await, or you have to wrap your components in act. <laughs> That's the wrong one. It should be like something like this. And there's, there's always sort of a gotcha you need to keep in mind when you're writing these tests. So while this is a bit of an improvement, it's a little bit more expressive, it still comes with all the same problems as test utils and enzyme. You're stuck in a terminal and you have to work around the limitations of asynchronous test runner. Not really ideal. Storybook is not really testing. Uh, some people will tell you it's regression testing. I suppose you could consider that to be testing, but it's not always going to tell you what's gone wrong. You can get visual diffs. It will tell you that something has changed, but that's not exactly the most reliable or autonomous way to know if your application is not working. So what are our other options? Traditionally, I've always used Cypress for my end-to-end -end tests, but until recently, this was really not a great option for your component tests. Cypress tests are aimed at end-to-end -end tests. They usually run a bit slower and generally just take a bit more time to iterate. That's not the case anymore though. We have now got component testing in Cypress and I'm going to share, you, share, with that, uh, share, <laughs> share that with you right now and then show you how all these other testing libraries fit into the Cypress stack. So if I head over to my other browser, I have Cypress open here. And what you can see is the Cypress component testing runner. And this solves a lot of problems. Unlike the tests that run in a terminal, we can actually see what is being rendered here. If I go ahead and run these, they are nice and quick. And we can immediately see if an error is being rendered or not. And if it's not, you can see exactly where it's not being rendered. I'm just going to show you the test side by side just to give you an idea of how these tests look. So let's open up this uh, Cypress test. And I'm also going to open up my test utils tests as well. And we can see they are very similar. Both are going to start with a mount. So we're going to mount our component or render our component. We're then using uh, cy cypress.get to render or to search for our roles. And then we're going to fill them out, much like we're doing over here. But the key difference is we're not using await. Cypress is intelligent enough to know it needs to wait for those elements to appear and then fill them out. Finally, we're going to make our same assertion. We are using the role selector here. So almost exactly the same thing as we have in our test utils tests. Again, Cypress is not too opinionated about how you select things. We're just using the query selector syntax here, but everything else generally works the same. One of the really nice things here is if we do have an error and we can't tell what's going on, we can actually see immediately what is going on here. And these do run really fast. You can see they just ran, it took a bit over a second. So it is a bit slower than the test utils test, which took about 200 milliseconds, but it's still nice and quick. Just to give you an idea of how this can be useful in terms of visual testing as well, if I head over to my component, in this case, it's going to be my form validation view, and we want to change something. For example, I want the error to be blue. If I save this off and head back to my browser, you can see how fast that re-rendered. Let's just change it back to red and quickly change back. So this kind of solves two problems. It solves the problem we have of being stuck in a terminal and not knowing what's been rendered. So it's kind of taking the place of maybe test utils or testing library but it also sort of takes the place of a storybook. We can see exactly what is being rendered. It is a little bit of a different tool to storybook, but it does uh, solve the problem of not being able to see what is going on. So you might think, well, should I just use Cypress for everything? What about my unit tests? What about testing library and test utils? So I still think it's pretty good to use something like Mocha or Jest for your unit tests. When I'm talking about unit tests, I specifically mean for your business logic. For example, over here, I have my validation tests, and these are very simple, and they don't really require an interface to be tested or rendered. They're just testing regular me memory or testing things in memory, for example, objects and values. There's no need to actually see what's going on, and I have, I'm pretty happy with the state of these tests. I have no problem in the terminal figuring out what's going on, and they're really, really fast.
Cypress is not really the kind of runner you would need to use these kind of tests. Cypress is much more aimed at sort of visual things. And these tests, at least the, uh, the unit tests are not very visual. On the other hand, Cypress is a really good fit for things that need to be rendered. For example, when you need to mount something. So I would say that Cypress sort of replaces test utils and test uh, testing library in a sense, but not really. It turns out that Cypress is actually running on top of both test utils. So it's using test utils for all the heavy uh, lifting, for example, rendering a view or react component. And you can actually use the testing library driver inside of Cypress as well. So what I mean by that is if you prefer the more expressive test, for example, get by label text, you can actually use this driver inside of Cypress. So you would do something like get by label text. So you get the expressiveness of testing library and you also get the, the power of Cypress and its visual runner. Finally, testing library is running on top of test utils and uh, React test utils as well. So these libraries are still very much relevant. Even if you're not using them directly, they're still part of the stack that's powering uh, Cypress or testing library. So they definitely still have their place. As far as using these individually, test utils is still a decent library for writing simple tests, but what I'm going to do moving forward is see how far I can get just by using Cypress. I think an ideal combination looks something like this. I'm going to use Jest or something like Mocha for my business logic tests. They run in the terminal, they run really fast, and the feedback loop is just fine. For my component tests, I'm going to see how far I can get with Cypress. I don't tend to write as granular tests. For example, if I was using uh, test utils, I might write an individual test for my name input and my weight input. And I don't feel like that's something Cypress is really suited to. I feel like when I use Cypress, I prefer to see the entire component in uh, kind of a story. So how the user is going to use the component. In this case, they're not going to use the name field individually. They use it in the context of the entire form. Of course, this is a little, a little bit further up the testing pyramid. I wouldn't call this a unit test anymore. I feel like with Cypress, I tend to write more integration tests, but I think that is just fine. I haven't used this for a very large system yet, but I have a feeling this is going to be a much better solution moving forward for my component tests. And I'm going to see how far I can push this. And I would encourage you to try it out as well. One other thing I'd like to try out is the testing library driver. I do really like the uh, encouragement around accessibility. They really want you to use things like get by role and get by display value, which I find to be a little bit more expressive than what I'm doing over here with my query selector syntax. So I might try that one out as well. Anyway, that's mainly what I wanted to talk about today. I'll go ahead and upload this GitHub repository as well if you'd like to check out all the different tests you can write and have a little bit of a play around with Cypress. But I have a really good feeling about where this is heading and I'm excited to see where things are or how things turn out using Cypress for all of my component tests. Uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. So I will see you in the next video.